A poll shows half of senior care organizations not currently mandating COVID-19 staff vaccinations and loopholes remain in a rush to upgrade nursing home staffing requirements. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you are a CNA, consider becoming a NACA member for only $30 a year. You can enroll quickly on our website at NACACNA.org. More than half of a subset of senior care and living operators could eventually mandate staff COVID-19 vaccinations according to results of a new Ziegler CFO hotline poll. With 10% of providers polled already mandating current staff or only new hire vaccinations, 12% of the remainder said they were highly likely and 37% said they were somewhat likely to make them mandatory. There was no timeline mentioned for when the mandates might be put in place, though many workplace experts have focused on the as yet unspecified dates when vaccines shed their experimental use authorization labels. Slightly more than half, 51% of the 90% not currently mandating vaccinations, said they were not at all likely to mandate them. The respondent pool of more than 220 operators was heavily weighed toward nonprofit life plan community organizations, also known as continuing care retirement communities. The new Ziegler poll also showed that the average staff vaccination rate rose from 62% in March to 67% in May. Now that the pandemic is finally loosening its grip, lawmakers in several states have turned their attention to a popular scapegoat of COVID-19's virulent spread in long-term care, staffing levels. In New York, a minimum staffing plan awaiting the governor's signature would require nursing homes to provide a daily average of three and a half hours of care per patient by a nurse or nursing assistant. In Arkansas, provider groups praised the first staffing requirement update in a decade as a big win, with a nearly 30% increase to 3.6 average direct care hours per resident day that also did away with strict shift scheduling. Several other states have taken a similar approach to regulating staffing levels. But even with the federal and state standards in place, experts say the rules are easily circumvented. Quote, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed how understaffing in our healthcare facilities, especially at our embattled nursing homes, can lead to a dangerous environment for residents and workers, New York State Senator Gustavo Rivera said. Other states implementing or pursuing higher staffing minimums include New Jersey, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Rhode Island. Not all of them plan to increase state Medicaid funding concurrent with those mandates, a major concern at a time when providers are short on workers and the increasing dollars needed to pay them. Quote, addressing staffing without addressing the antiquated payment model and the difficulty recruiting the workforce for long-term care is like fixing only one leg of a three-legged stool. Tara A. Cortez, PhD and RN, Executive Director of the Hartford Institute for Geriatric Nursing, recently said. She continued, unless competitive and livable wages are provided to the long-term care workforce, recruitment and retention will continue to be a challenge. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.